What do you do when someone with dementia refuses to bathe? So this week I actually had some questions about older adults who are living with dementia who don't want to bathe. That's not really how it was framed when someone was asking for my help with it. It was more that the individuals were refusing to bathe or they were resisting care. Um, you know, those phrases that tend to um, be a bit of a shorthand for uh, what we understand as being a responsive behavior that's part of a dementia. Both of these individuals happen to be living in a retirement home which is sort of like, um, it's not a nursing home, but it's a place where there is congregate dining and there's housekeeping. There's usually a nurse who's on duty and um, there is uh, help with medical issues like taking medications and things like that. So a lot of people who are living with dementia or who are living with other disabilities um, tend to live in retirement homes. And I guess they're called retirement homes because most of those people are older adults who were living somewhere else in the community before they moved into the retirement home. And that might have something to do with it because a lot of times um, the issues about whether or not someone is bathing uh, does come up in a retirement home. People are often paying uh, for that help and service of so many number of baths per week. Um, so it's an expectation that that'll be what is received when a person is living there and, um, and uh, has subscribed to that particular package, so to speak. But in both of these cases, bath time was becoming a very troublesome time. Um, one individual had not had a bath for about six months. Um, they were also very reluctant to change their clothes. Uh, and um, when bath time was proposed uh, and when the team went in to try to initiate that event, uh, there had been responses like hitting and punching. Um, one individual had done some biting as well um, and also some verbal responses that were very negative and sometimes um, colorful. So this was a big challenge and the staff was feeling really uh, demoralized and stressed out. And in fact, in one case, um, the fact that the bath time was not going well was threatening the person's ability to stay in the retirement home. So what to do about this and why does it happen in the first place? So there could be many reasons why someone who's living with dementia does not want to bathe. One thing could have to do with the person's previous bathing habits. So it might be that somebody did only bathe a couple times a month, but uh, nobody was really keeping tabs on that until they went to live in the retirement home where someone else was keeping track of their bathing routine. Another thing could be that the person uh, might find the bathing experience uncomfortable for a lot of reasons. So bathing is usually something that's done in private and somebody might not be comfortable with undressing and bathing in front of someone else or even having that other person participating in that activity. The bathing could be physically uncomfortable, so the room could be cold, um, it could be frightening if the person has ever had any kind of trauma um, or even if they've just fallen or slipped in the tub, um, it could be that it brings up painful memories. So those kinds of things could make bathing something that a person would want to avoid. Another reason could be that because of someone's short-term memory deficit, they might think that they've just had a bath even if it's been a month or longer. So you can imagine if you think you've just had a bath, why would you need another one so soon, especially if it's something that you don't enjoy? So what can you do if someone refuses to bathe? Well, there are many different approaches and there's been a lot of study into this topic. A lot of the advice that I've seen about getting someone to bathe kind of overlaps with the advice that's given for behavioral challenges in dementia in general. So that starts with getting to know the person and trying to think about why, in particular, bathing might be a difficult activity for this individual. Does it have to do with the person themselves and their experience? Does it have to do with characteristics about the caregiver, their approach, their timing, their language, their physical um, approach? Or does it have to do with the environment? Does it need to be warmer, uh, more brightly lit, uh, does it need to feel safer or more cozy or more familiar? 
Those are all things to think about. I've heard of some very creative strategies. So for example, um, purposefully soiling somebody um, so that they'll be more motivated uh, to, uh, to clean themselves. Um, or to even um, wet the person so that they'll want to change their clothes or take them off. Um, sometimes that can be done in a way that isn't sort of as mean as it sounds, but on the face of it, that does sound a little bit extreme. Um, and I would hope that maybe another approach could be found. Um, but you know, for example, if someone is partway undressed, but they don't want to undress completely, um, then you could put a wet towel or something on their uh, clothing so that that may, might make them want to take the rest of their clothing off. Or you could start the bathing while the person is partially dressed and then encourage them to completely undress. There's a lot of compromise often when it comes to dealing with responsive behaviors in dementia. And the bathing uh, issue is a place where there needs to sometimes be a lot of compromise. It's probably important to think about why the bathing needs to be done in the first place. A lot of people feel that it's a health and hygiene issue, and for sure it's a hygiene issue, but most of the time it's not a major health issue if somebody uh, decides to avoid bathing for a long period of time. Um, as people get older, there is generally, um, the natural changes with age can include less sweating and less sebum production and less hydration. So actually bathing very frequently um, might exacerbate a problem with skin dryness um, unless there's moisturization afterwards. So um, I'm not a dermatologist, but you know, that's kind of my nutshell take on the uh, topic. So it's not necessarily that important that somebody showers every day or even every week uh, for their health in most cases. If there's incontinence, then it's probably important to clean that um, area around where the incontinence is happening more regularly, but not necessarily um, every single day or several times a day. So what I'm getting at is that it might be necessary to relax a person's standards about how often the bathing takes place. Sometimes um, there's concern about the bathing because uh, family members um, want to see the person looking cleaner and more like uh, the person that they know, um, or because they feel that um, the, the level of hygiene is important for the person's dignity. And there's definitely some validity to that. Um, but if there's a strong resistance to bathing, then the trade-off um, might be that, um, you know, it, it might, it might be that the, what has to be done to get the person to bathe or to force them to bathe might not be worth it um, just for them to have that, um, that cleanliness that might be pleasing someone else more than it's pleasing the person with dementia. So it's a difficult question and I'd be interested to know what your thoughts are when it comes to older adults living with dementia who no longer want to bathe. Oftentimes the question of safety of staff uh, or care partners comes up when it comes to this bathing idea um, because as I mentioned in the the cases that I was um, helping with this week uh, there was a lot of physical responsiveness and so it was putting staff at risk and so that's definitely a situation that we want to uh, we don't want that to go on um, because it could cause people to get hurt and that's not what we want so let me know what your experiences have been with older adults who don't want to bathe um, tell me what you think has been helpful. You might notice I haven't mentioned medications and most of the time medications aren't terribly helpful unless there's a particular symptom that is happening around the bathing that can be treated. So for example, if a person is having a panic attack or severe anxiety when it comes to bathing, then maybe treating it um, with something uh, that will help with anxiety over the short term, that might be helpful. That's not without its trade-offs as well. So for example, if we gave someone a little bit of lorazepam to calm them down before their bath, um, there is an increased risk that they will get um, more unsteady on their feet or they might even fall because they're on that medication. So that's just sort of an example where you know medications might help, but again, they do have risks. So in general, it's the non-medication uh, interventions that are more likely to bear fruit. Thanks for watching, and if you want more Wrinkle, go to www.therinkle.ca or watch the video that YouTube is suggesting right now.